In this tutorial, I'm going to cover everything you need to know to get started using Talking Head version 1.5. This version is now compatible with After Effects CC. So the first thing you need to do is install the script. Installation is basically the same on Mac and PC. Just find your After Effects CC application folder. Inside there will be a scripts folder. Open the scripts folder and you will find the script UI panels folder. This is where you want to copy the script and the face template PNG file. It is important that you copy both files into the script UI panels folder. If you do not have the face template PNG, you'll get an error every time you open the script. It will technically work, but you will not have the background for the UI panel. Now when you open After Effects CC and go to the window menu, you'll see the talking head script at the bottom with your other scripts. Once everything is installed and working properly, you will need some artwork. The script does come packaged with an example PSD. The key to the whole thing is layers. You need to have all your facial features on their own layer. So the eyebrows, the pupils, the eyes, the different mouth shapes, anything you want to animate needs to be separated out. The easiest way to do this is with a PSD file, but you can also have separate images that you then recompile in After Effects. When you import your PSD file to After Effects, make sure you import it as a composition and retain layer sizes. This will ensure that all your layers are cropped with the anchor point centered. This will save you a lot of time later on. I'm going to create a new solid and use that as a background. This character is wearing sunglasses and that is the topmost layer. So if I try to select the eye layers behind it, I'm just going to keep hitting the sunglasses. So I'm going to lock that layer and attach it to the head in case I decide to rotate the head later on. The sunglasses will move with it. Now you can start selecting your face layers and adding them to the rig. So I'm going to select the left eyebrow first and hit the left eyebrow button. Because this is the first feature I'm adding to the rig, it has also created the control layer. Each additional feature I add will be linked to this control layer. You can add features in any order that you wish. So if you select the pupil first, you will not get a track mat until you select the eye layer for that side. So on the right side, I'm going to select the eye layer first, and there's no pupil mat until I select the pupil. When you add a face to the rig, all of the layers currently in the rig will automatically be parented to the face, and any new layers you add will also automatically be parented. When it comes to mouths, you can select multiple shapes at a time. In this case, I have two open mouth shapes, so I'm going to select them both and hit the mouth open button. Now they're indexed one and two. The example artwork only has one closed mouth shape, but the script will work with as many open and closed shapes as you want. The last thing I'm going to do is attach the face to the neck. and I will also need to attach the hair to the head. One handy thing you can do is grab the control layer and scale it up and sort of center it over the face so that the point controller for the look direction lines up with your pupils. This way when you drag the locator around they will look at it. It's kind of a handy way to do things. I'm just gonna make sure all of my controls are working correctly before I start animating. So let's see here, you have the look skew. So as you move this around, it will sort of skew the pupils, which can create some comical effects, but also it's handy if you have a character that's drawn in perspective and they're sort of looking off to the side. Sometimes you'll need to sort of skew the pupils so they look correct depending on the angle of the head. Um, you have some controls for your blinking, so the character will automatically blink. <laughs> I'm gonna reset the link skew, the look skew. The character will automatically blink, so if you want him to blink faster or slower, you can adjust the blink interval. So bringing this down to 60 will make him blink quicker. And the blink speed is actually a percentage of the blink interval. So it will automatically adjust to match the new speed. So yeah, so you have a control here, so you can adjust the squint. So adjusting this will make the eyes larger or smaller. Adjust the squint offset, so you can get that cool Invader Zim offset eyeball crazy eyes thing going on. You have controls for the eyebrows, so you can tilt them. Now these are pretty much all the same controls as in the previous version. None of this has really changed. Um, you have the eyebrows offset. There is one new control here down at the bottom though. You have eyebrow pinch. So now you can kind of offset the eyebrows 
horizontally, which is helpful if you're trying to bring them way in or if you're trying to raise them way up and tilt them out, you can get like that kind of surprised look. So that helps give you a little more control over the different features. And there's also one new option up at the top here called link shape, link mouth shape to volume. Instead of manually selecting the open mouth shape with a keyframe, you can now link it to the volume. So it will divide the volume from zero to the maximum and cycle between the different mouth shapes. So that's handy if you have a character with like a very dynamic vocal track where you want different shapes for when they're talking quietly or like screaming at whatever. I'm going to import some audio now and set up my lip sync. Once you have an audio file in your project, just drag it into the timeline. You'll then want to right click and go to keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. This will automatically create a layer called audio amplitude and the script will automatically link up the controls to this layer. So now your mouse will start opening and closing with the audio. The jaw will also animate with the audio. This animation looks a little bit off though. Taking a closer look, you can see the anchor point is in the center of the layer, and it is scaling out symmetrically. If you move the anchor point to the top of the layer, it will scale from the top down. Now the animation looks correct. If you want to add new audio, just delete this layer, bring in a new file, and recreate it. If you have more than one audio amplitude layer in your project, it will just grab whichever one is on top. So if you want to keep cycling between different takes, you can do that just by switching which one is on top. Now I'm going to change the open mouth shape to mouth number two. I'm going to adjust the anchor point so that it's closer to the top. So when the mouth scales with the audio, it's a bit more realistic looking. The next thing I want to do is keyframe some shape changes for the open mouth. So first I'm going to select the audio track and run the RAM preview. While the RAM preview is playing back, I'm going to press the asterisk key to lay down a marker wherever I want to keyframe a shape change. I'm looking to shake up the department and I want you two to be my enforcers. Hmm? My Cheech and Chong, my Skinner and Bedeal. You'll be the iron fists inside my velvet glove. The spiky balls on the end of my stick. Yeah? No. I'm looking to shake up... So there you go. Now we have some markers roughly at where I want to change the mouth shape. So I'm just going to keyframe that shape change and just kind of copy and paste that over for the other markers and then just kind of tweak that a little bit because I probably hit the button a little bit after the shape change so I can just kind of slide all the keyframes just a little bit early to kind of compensate for that delay. I'm looking to shake up the department, and I want you two to be my enforcers. Hmm? My Cheech and Chong, my Skinner and Bedeal. You'll be the iron fists inside my velvet glove. The spiky balls on the end of my stick. Yeah? No. Okay, I'm so that's looking pretty close. You get the gist, right? There is one little weird thing on the audio track at the very end. It sounds like a different character jumps in and says no. So what we can do, instead of like editing the audio track and redoing the whole convert audio to keyframes, we can just open the audio amplitude layer and we can just delete the keyframes for that one little section that we want to remove from the lip sync. Now I'm going to go ahead and keyframe my facial features to go along with the audio track a little bit so that he's looking around and changing his eyebrows and stuff just like a regular human would do. I'm looking to shake up the department and I want you two to be my enforcers. Hmm? My Cheech and Chong. My Skinner and Bedeal. You'll be the iron fists inside my velvet glove. The spiky balls on the end of my stick. Yeah? All right, yeah, you know, it's coming along, but I think the lip sync could actually be a little bit tighter, and there are a couple of things we can do. This audio file is not the best quality, and it's also really loud, like it's been overcompressed at some point along the way here. What I can do is raise the mouth open threshold. This will increase the volume level required for the mouth to switch from the closed to the open shape making things look a little I'm bit tighter. When you convert the audio to keyframes, the numbers are a little bit twitchy by nature. What you can do to smooth things out is open the audio keyframes layer, select all the keyframes, and then open the smoother. It doesn't take much. I'm going to use a value of 0.5. And that will just smooth things out a little bit, giving you a more natural looking animation. 
I'm looking to shake up the department, and I want you two to be my enforcers. Hmm? My Cheech and Chong. My Skinner and Bedeal. You'll be the iron fists inside my velvet glove. The spiky balls on the end of my stick. Yeah? That covers the basics of working with the Talking Head script. For more advanced tutorials, check out the website.